Hello everybody, Chester here, and welcome to CMB Extra. So, a, um, a rather popular streamer, uh, Battle for Bikini Bottom, like, uh, speedrunner type of guy called Shift, uploaded a video, uh, which was a little part of his stream, where he talked about his recent trip to Purple Lamp Studios, and his game testing of Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. And it's about an hour and 40 minutes long, it's very long, um, but I went through it, and I watched all of it, and 90% well, of it I clicked off in the last 10 minutes, because I was like, alright, I think I have gotten the most amount of the information that I'm really interested in so far. Uh, but I might have missed a few things, so let me know in the uh, comments down below. So this is just a little chat about the main type of information we were able to get from the video, and just a bit of a chat about all of that. So let's get into it. So one of the main facts that he really nailed home in the video that I, um, I thought I'd bring up here is the fact that the gameplay we have seen so far, the screenshots, the demo stuff we saw at PAX and all that type of stuff is months old and it was months old when it was shown to us. It's, so it's, it's pretty unfair to base a lot of opinions on that because by that stage it was already been changed so much and altered a lot so yeah, so he, he mentioned that quite a few times. Um, there are alterations to movement that will mostly affect um, stuff for speedrunners. So there's some change. He used some specific terms for a lot of stuff, which I didn't understand because I've never watched any of the speedrunning stuff. So I'm fairly sure all that relates to mostly speedrunner-based stuff. So there's changes along those type of stuff, taking out some glitches that we utilized. I think that's what he was meaning. Yeah, again, I'm not 100% sure. I've never been involved in any of that type of stuff, but yeah. Uh, then there's also some alterations to buttons, which are needed to be uh, worked out. So he was talking about how pressing and holding the like X button type of thing did the same thing. So there's changes going on to that type of stuff and stuff along that type of way. Um, anim animations aren't as stiff as in the demo, but the model of SpongeBob has remained the same. So there were quite a few people who were like, eh, towards the um, SpongeBob demo we saw, the SpongeBob uh, model we saw uh, in the the first gameplay we saw because it looked quite stiff and just didn't look as good as in the original game which is kind of funny but that's apparently because it's the same model as in the upcoming uh, upcoming Spongebob movie which I think encourages my theory that this game will be released as almost a tie-in or at least in the same week span or in the same month as the third movie so in many ways they are to complement each other I think the the uh, inclusion of the same model really does help that theory a little bit. It could just be for the fact that Nickelodeon wants all their models to be the same across all their stuff, which is c perfectly like expected, but it does kind of lean more towards that type of way. Um, some animations like the attack animations are still rough and need refining, so there's some other stuff, stuff we saw in the demo that apparently haven't been uh, fixed yet. Uh, Bubble Bowl is very rough and feels very new apparently, so I'm guessing that means it's a quite a new addition and it does also uh, throughout everything he brought up and everything we'll bring up in this video it does appear very much like this game is still very 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 early on so we're most likely going to be getting it mid to late next year type of area. Um, there's been changes to the field of view so um, because the original game was of course has different aspect ratio because it was on older consoles because of the increased in aspect ratio there's some changes to the field of view which will be interesting to see in comparison stuff and there was also a reduction in jump height because apparently he was jumping quite a bit higher than he did in the original game so they've changed that to make platforming work a little bit more and also there was they've changed some stuff with the cameras because there was apparently some issues with like seeing the character's shadow to be able to line up jumps there's some issues with that uh, there are alterations to rock bottom to stop players from skipping parts of the level rock bottom is always while I do love Rock Bottom, I think it's one of the worst laid out levels. I often don't know where I'm going, or if I'm going the right route, or if I've broken the level and I've like skipped a whole part of it. So hopefully these alterations will help with that. Um, there's also some changes to boss battles, making them faster, hopefully, which is something that uh, he brought up, saying how these bosses are way too long and just speeding them up in their alterations, because of course they like Mario bosses, they're three hits and they're done type of thing so each after a hit they get faster and faster and faster making the bosses shorter as well but he also said the uh, bosses are unfinished as well and also that jellyfish fields is the most complete part which we also kind of knew already just because of the amount of screenshots we've had of it and it's kind of the only part of the game we've really seen so we've all kind of presumed that it is the most 
finished part, uh, but also the uh, Switch version is making development a bit more tricky because once again the Switch version you can play on the big screen but also everything has to fit on that smaller uh, display so that causes some issues I'm sure with displaying um, field of view stuff and all that type of stuff so of course it would make it a bit tricky especially if you're developing a PC version where you can have ultra wide monitors and then you you're also dealing with the small little Switch screen so it's definitely going to cause some issues. Uh, apparently sliding is actually they actually have made progress on sliding, which is interesting because we haven't seen anything about that, not even like concept art or anyone really talking about that. But apparently they've added the addition of motion blur to the sliding, but all depends on like how fast you're going. So the motion blur can be extreme or less, which is actually really uh, interesting. Apparently also Sandy is also very unfinished at this stage, which I mean, yeah, again, our lack of ever even seeing her outside of that one screenshot. Um, it wasn't screenshot, it was like an art thing. Uh, has kind of proved that, that, yeah, she's definitely still being worked on quite a bit. Um, there's also, uh, he mentioned some possible additions to combat, say Sandy being able to use her lasso more in combat and Patrick having a mid-air uh, attack. And this is all because of the new uh, multiplayer horde mode. So the combat in the original game was, well, it's, you know, all right. It wasn't it's not really enough to build a mode on like I'm, no one's going to jump into a horde mode and be happy with just mashing the one button to do the same attack the entire time so the addition of more attack stuff could be really interesting he also mentioned that squidward's in the game now he didn't like say anything about this and he didn't really like add any context he just said you know, uh squidward's in the game but he didn't say if he was playable he didn't say if he's been in added in more to the game or anything like that because if you remember our video we did with Riders DX we talked about how interesting it could be if Squidward was playable for two reasons we brought up firstly the addition of the new boss battle where Squidward is you know one of the uh, characters all the other characters who have robot bosses are characters who are playable type of thing yet Squidward isn't and also Squidward for some reason is at the end of the game with everyone else after the boss battle like he was almost meant to be involved with it somehow it's all just like rumor stuff and fans hoping for stuff but it would be interesting um there's also the possibility of more rewards for exploration and levels which i would honestly love because you know you you go down this path that you know leads you away from the main objective and you go past all stuff and you're jumping behind rocks and all stuff stuff and then you pick up like a a one shiny object and you're like okay that was a lot of time to get that one shiny object so the addition of more uh, praise really for going out of your way to explore every level would honestly be great and even if the addition of a new collectible item that could even help with all that type of stuff he also said they're not implementing anything from the movie game stuff which has been stuff people have been asking for and I've kind of you know pushed off because it's like yeah it's not they're not gonna do that but there has been the opportunities for them to in, uh, introduce some stuff from it but apparently they're not doing any of that which I mean it's completely fair and pretty like, of course they're going to do that. Um, but, yeah, it's... we. I think the fan base needs someone to say, oh, they're not doing that. It's not happening. Type of thing. Um, also, the one of the issues that I and a lot of people had when the original demo footage came out was the extreme oversaturation of the gameplay. I was... My eyes were bleeding, type of thing. It took me a while to get used to it. But apparently that's not what the game looks like at all. Apparently that was a faulty capture card that caused that issue. That's not how oversaturated the game. That's not the the saturation of the game that he played or that it, like people saw when they were playing it. It was just the issue of, with a capture card. So I'm quite happy about that because that was a bit of a worry for me. Um, he also said the theater uh, either hasn't been started or is very early in development because he didn't get a look at that. So yeah, again, yeah, proof the game is very far from being finished. Um, knockback has been changed to some degree, apparently, both for the character, so for SpongeBob getting hit and also hitting robots. Apparently, hitting robots, they don't go as far. And also, when you get hit, it's a little bit different. Um, so, they'll probably change that a little bit, but it will be interesting considering that's a big complaint for a lot of people. You're you know, platforming along, you get hit once, you go flying off of the stage, type of thing. Um, there is also little info on cheats and the additions of skins as the game hasn't like reached a level of completion where those types of things are even like considered by people. They're still building the game. They're not, they haven't reached the point of being like, mm, should we add extra skins type of stuff? So that's still all quite up in the air. Um, out of the stuff he did play though, because you're yeah, talking about how much they've completed, the stuff he has played that's at a point where it's almost, where it's 
complete enough to play some aspects of jump around a little bit or do something in the level. They're not 100% complete, but they are somewhat playable. The levels he played are Jellyfish Fields, Downtown, Goo Lagoon, The First Boss Battle, Rock Bottom, Sand Mountain, Mermelair, Dutchman's Graveyard, and uh, the Sandy Boss Battle, uh, the uh, Patrick Boss Battle as well. Apparently those are the only levels that have any major kind of completed, completed aspects. He also suggested changes to Kelp Forest, parts that are often complained about he mentioned, so possibly the brightness and often uh, unintuitive design. So he, he said he mentioned that to the uh, development team, which would be great considering that is one of my biggest issues with the damn game. Uh, also areas like the museum are getting much more detailed design, which is, sounds pretty great as well. Um, and also none of the dreams were playable, he said. Um, so he was able to fight the uh, Sandy and Patrick, those bosses. Um, but he also mentioned that Patrick's melon throwing mechanic is still very early in development. So that probably would have made the boss battles quite a bit more difficult. But uh, also robot animation has drastically improved, which is quite interesting. And, you know, I'd love to see some newer gameplay that's not, you know, months out of date. I'd love to see some up-to-date, newer gameplay. That'd be honestly amazing. There's also apparently some alterations possibly to easter eggs like the rock bottom bus one where he suggested that uh, it's not just a cutscene the character can run up to the bus and then the bus drives away type of thing which could be I know, interesting and also seeing if they might add more easter eggs or alter some other ones so there's a lot kind of up in the air of all that so yeah those are kind of those are, those are the main things that he mentioned that i picked up on and thought were interesting i thought i'd talk to you all about but um, yeah, so let me know what you thought about those. But here's the thing, and I made a video about this yesterday. Uh, you probably won't be able to leave a comment on this video. You might, it depends if uh, those rules have been implemented yet, but comments may be disabled, which could prove to be very, very difficult and very annoying. Um, so if you want to tell me what you thought about this, tell me about these Easter eggs, uh, your opinions on them, which, uh, what you're most interested in, and what you thought of Shift's video, uh, you can join our Discord, it'll be the first link in the description, and you can leave a comment there and chat to me there and other creators there and other uh, people who love this type of stuff there. So, first link in the description down below. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye!